Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Conspiracy Farm, where we don't start the conspiracies, we just add the water. And now, your host of the most state-of-the-art, most informed podcast on the interweb, I present to you, Pat Militage and Jeffrey Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for... Ah, cool. Very cool, man. Locked and loaded once again. Another episode of The Conspiracy Farm. I, Jeff Wilson, co-host with my boy, UFC Hall of Famer Pat Militich. What do we have going on today, champ? Well, we've got a lot going on. Obviously, General Flynn resigning. I think it was probably, you're going to get fired, so just turn in your resignation. Uh, Well, did you hear? He tweeted this morning, one single word, scapegoat. That's all he tweeted this morning. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. So some machinations going on. I find that interesting. I mean, who, they're doing the whole what did what did the president know? When did he know it? On on Flynn having talked to the Soviet or the Soviet the Russian ambassador on on sanctions, specifically sanctions dealing with the election. The Justice well, Department's a, apparently told the White House Counsel like three weeks ago, and then he resigns last night. So they're wondering like, hey, why did it take three weeks? Well, I would say this. I mean, he. Um, for whatever reason, you know, saying, hey, when we – and was this during the summer when this meeting took place? That's when I'm – that's when I'm getting – the information I'm getting is it took place um, just this last summer. Basically, yeah, Flynn was saying, hey, I've gotten word that I'm probably going to be involved in the cabinet. If Trump's in, you know, don't don't retaliate yet um, because when Trump gets in, you know – it is what it is. Well, and that's right? what they're saying on the, the the news today. The guys who did the press conference, I forget what the the uh, the dude, Dan, the senator or congressman, he was saying. You know, Flynn was talking to the Russian ambassador the same time Putin was fucking hacking and undermining. So they just they just tried to inflame it, make it seem like it was this like coordinated effort and all this other shit. But so it, let's let's shed some truth on this instead of listening to CNN, right? Well, I mean, all the major news is kind of saying the same narrative. You know what I mean? The DOJ told you guys three weeks ago, why did it take three weeks for him to resign? And, you know, Spicer. But, Jeff, we're back to, we're back to, here's that thing. When have you ever watched and clicked through the news channels and had them reporting on news that was different? Well, yeah, it's always the so, same, yeah. Right, because they're reading, they're, they're reading the same shit off the AP line. Yeah, exactly. Right, so the AP is like their go-to for for national news, for local news, Reuters all AP, yeah. the exact same script, literally. Who is who is writing the AP stuff? I want to know the exact people that are writing this stuff. Um, I think that that should be a show. We need to investigate these people and find out who they're connected to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, AP, Reuters, any of your main international news that, you, like you said, could literally carry the same narrative. You mentioned it three or four shows ago, a YouTube video where it's just maybe like 10 minutes of just news from all over the country literally saying – the same stuff. So, I think Wikipedia needs to, uh, uh, or WikiLeaks needs to investigate those people and and start exposing all their emails. <laughs> yeah, would that be interesting? All the routers and AP people. I'm well, serious. It, it is just interesting to see them like this small crack that they think is some impropriety just seize on it today. They're like. You know, independent investigations, you know, special process. I mean, it's just like they even dropped the treason, said he committed, Trump had committed treason. It's just like, man, I I knew anything that went down they were going to seize on, but it was just like, fuck, man, they're making kind of much ado about nothing a little bit. You know what I mean? uh, Yeah, I, I don't know. They have such a hard on for hating Putin. It's crazy. It's like, I understand meeting with him prior to Trump getting elected could cause some conflicts, et cetera, et cetera, but it's just like, I think dialogue is a good thing. I don't know when that got frowned upon. Right. You know, you know, keep your enemies close, your friends close, your enemies closer. It's like, what's what's the problem here? Maybe I'm just missing something. Now, remember, something. Um, remember when, when Obama got caught on a hot mic, even. Now, think about this. Um, this. This is where Trump has credibility and where the mainstream news won't report this. Um, you know, so reportedly, you know, um, this general is over there having a meeting with Russians, dinner with Putin, saying, you know, wait till Trump gets in, you know, things will change after he gets in. Um, don't freak out about sanctions. But in, uh, what was it, December of 2012, Barack Obama was overheard on a hot mic telling Russian President Dmitry Medvedev yeah. 
that he would have more flexibility after the election. I remember that. Okay. I remember so, that. So, you know, um, he look was that in up office. Too. That's, that's legit Flynn was shit. not in office. Yeah, you can look that up, brother. That's or everyone out there. That's, that is legit. That went down. That audio does exist. Yeah, look it up on YouTube and listen to it for yourself. So, you know, the liberal media freaking out about this one situation. And look, <clears throat> I can see, you know, Vice President Pence, uh, who really thought a lot of, of Flynn, um, having been lied to and saying, dude, you got to go, you know, before this goes nuclear, you got to, you got to resign, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if, if it was played outright or played correctly by the administration and they go, look, man, this, this tells you that this president is not playing games. He's credible. He will fire anyone that steps out of line who doesn't do what they're supposed to and then go through the list of all the people, including, including President Obama, um, who repeatedly lied. You can keep your doctor. You can keep your plan. And sure. on down the line um, to Susan Rice visiting five talk shows in the morning blaming a YouTube video for the attacks in Benghazi, Libya. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the list goes on and on and on. I mean, Holder lied to a congressional hearing. I mean, um, Clinton lied um, numerous times and, and just flat out caught red-handed about her emails and everything else. At this point, so, what difference does it make? Exactly. So <laughs> it's it's complete garbage. Um, and if, if I'm Trump, I'm telling people in my cabinet, uh, the people that are writing my speeches, load my gun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Load yeah. my gun. Load my gun with all these facts, and I'm going to go out and destroy. I'm going to go out and destroy these people. You know, because it's well it's another another target that's manifested in this past week, as you've noticed, is North Korea. They did a little launching of some missiles uh, the other day, and I guess uh, there, there hasn't really been an official response from the Trump administration. But I'll be anxious to see that one because that's one. They're going to – obviously, he's going to get tested by several countries, but that's one that's definitely going to test him like he has other presidents. But I'll be anxious to see his response, how hard he will the, be on that. The South Korean rock marines are going to invade north, the north side. And then automatically what? China jumps in on, this, on the north back, and then we have the, you know, the agreement with the south, so then – Well, you just wonder. I mean, the, the North Koreans uh, – can they honestly? I mean, where where the problem lies is their friendship with Islamic states like Iran, um, their technology to be able to launch missiles, their um, nuclear capabilities now, detonating nuclear devices, um, and helping Iran. I mean, I know that some shipments of stuff has, have been intercepted going from North Korea to Iran. So that's that's where the problem is. I mean, I, can North Korea? Create a missile that's actually going to be accurate, maybe eventually, but I don't. I just don't know how soon they can do it. Um, you know, I'm not. I don't have my finger on the pulse yeah. of that that part of technology that's going on and the spying and everything else. But um, I mean, North Korea can't be that stupid. Well, I mean, and they wouldn't be. I, I don't think if they didn't have that big brother. You know what I mean? Go ahead and fuck with me. My big brother's going to kick your ass. Type mentality. Uh, which has kind of played in its favor. If they were out there on their own, this rogue country doing this stuff, it would be a whole different beast, don't you think? Right, right. Yeah, no, it would. But uh, yeah, nobody wants nobody wants war with China when you've got what uh, fifty million unmarried young men um, with nothing to do. Just throw a gun right. in their hand and freaking send them off to die. I mean, that's a big army, dude. Well, and that's that's kind of what I've been reading up on this week, man. Trump and the Trump administration with the sanctions, the new kind of sanctions that are going into Iran. It's kind of crazy, bro. Because yes, it is affecting Iran, but it's an economic war on China via via the proxy Iran. Because like you just said, China is invested in so many different companies that you know because of the old sanctions. Uh, United States and other Western companies couldn't invest in, so China went in and invested in so many of those different countries, and those are some of the ones now that are getting shut down. So instead of going in directly into squashing the Iran deal, it's a slow kind of moving thing he's got going on economically against China because you know obviously that's a huge part of their machine is their economy, and you know you got the North China Sea, South China Sea, all of that is developing, and then you had what Rex Tillerson, the uh, Secretary of State nominee, I don't know if he's officially got nominated, saying. He is going to, you know, the U.S. is going to disallow access to those Chinese bases, which, holy shit, man, I, I don't know how that would play it, how that would play out. Um, he's kind of softened his rhetoric and saying, you know, just don't militarize those bases. But at first, he was saying, 
they're going to completely disallow access. So, well, it's like World War II, the battle for Midway and and other yeah. islands, um, in between us and Japan. You know, the those were, you know, monstrous battles uh, waged at sea to to own those landing strips and and be able to create those landing strips on those islands. So, um, you know, that's basically essentially what China's done is built built. Um, man-made islands for landing strips and military bases to be able to strike people um, from the, from those locations, which is, I mean, that's pretty serious business. Oh, yeah. Dude, what's so crazy, dude, is my, my at Scott Community College in like 94 or 5, my history instructor, good old Dr. David Crine, told me to look out for the war going on that's going to go on in the Spratly Islands because he said there's more fucking oil there than almost anywhere in the world. It's just everyone's just sleeping on it. And that's a huge, obviously, part of this thing is natural resources. But, right. of, of course, is, you know. Right? Huh? Always is, right? Well, yeah, but that's just so crazy. My man knew about that shit like 25 years ago, and here we are. It's like it's a, it's a, big, it's a big player in that region. He knew his stuff. You had a good teacher. Well, and you know what, dude? And I, this is my conspiracy hat going on. And this is this is how they do play. So I don't give a fuck if anybody believes it or not. If you watch the Navy commercials, some of the newer Navy commercials, like they show all the quick quick edits and the quick cuts, and at the very end, they will zoom out from whatever particular part in the world that I think the next kind of war is. And if you look at some of the newer Navy commercials, when they zoom out, it's right in that South China South China Sea area. Uh, that, that Pacific South China Sea. So interesting stuff, man. We'll see. I mean, like I said, I'll be anxious to see what kind of hard line or if it is a hard line with 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 China. But um, yeah, like Ooh, said, foreshadowing no. going on with the commercial you're saying. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. It's kind of that. Yeah, pretty much. Because there's been wow. a few of them. There's been there's and it's crazy because I watched it literally for like a year before I could really put a finger on it. And I remember one night, uh, whatever, uh, one, one came on and I told my friend, I'm like, watch this, dude, watch this. And when they zoomed out, it was right in this certain area and which started this kind of whole conversation we went on. But it's kind of the shit you got to pay attention to. Or you could just be completely paranoid and be talking out of your ass. But I think I'm on some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I think you are too. Um, so anyway, with that, you know, since you're talking on uh, potential conflicts and things like that, we've got the uh, troop readiness drills going on on the Russian western border with uh, Latvia, Estonia, Poland, mm. all those different countries there. And, uh, you know, like I, I, I'm i sitting there th- saying to myself, why are they doing troop readiness drills and for what, right? And talking with a guy on Twitter, back and forth, private messaging. Um, he's a guy that kind of specializes in studying a lot of this troop movement. And uh, that's what he said. He's like, why are they doing troop readiness drills on the Russian border? For what purpose? Why wouldn't you do troop readiness drills anywhere else? How 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 whatever frequent is that, or how you know is that something it's that they not? I mean, we've just built up NATO and and uh, American forces in in those areas of the world gradually um, over the past couple of years, basically, and it's it's started to grow exponentially lately sending in a lot of troops and I'm just sitting there saying to myself, um, this is, you know, this is getting a little hairy because like I said, imagine if Russian troops were on the Mexican border yeah. with us doing troop readiness drills. Dude, what do you think Trump would be doing? Losing his shit. I mean, we'd all be, I'd be, I'd be heading to the say, bunker. Trump, bro. Would say, <laughs> Trump would say all Russian forces and Mexican forces better get off the border or we're going to annihilate you. Right, you're threatening our you're threatening our nation. Yeah, that's basically what's going on. That's what's happening. I mean, these NATO troops and American troops. Look, I'm for America. I'm American. I love America, but we shouldn't be on their border doing troop readiness drills and, and inflaming the situation. And see, this is I mean, I, let me ask you this, dude, because obviously, obviously you're a big brain on this shit, and I've, I've always I've always stewed on this over the last maybe like ten, fifteen years. I see a lot of provocative shit, man. North Korea launching missiles, threats of war constantly. I mean, obviously, we are engaged in certain wars, but the big ones, Russia, China, U.S., are those ever going to go down or will always will it always remain in that realm of saber rattling to get us all east west divided while all the time they never will pull the trigger because of that economic independence they've created over these last 15, 20 years that they all kind of need each other 
So even though I don't think it would be like mutually assured destruction, <clears throat> we all need each other. So we can't go bombing, carpet bombing countries anymore. You know what I mean? Is it all going to be saber rattling with some strategic war or could there ever be a big fucking, you know what I mean, uh, what we all fear kind of war? Or will well, that I never happen that, because of the economic interdependence of all the countries now? There's a lot of people that believe World War III has already begun. True, true that. About, I do, I do as well. The, it's just been economic. Yeah, think about the conflicts um, going on all over the globe, the Middle East, in Africa. Um, th things are going going off everywhere. Um, so you sit there and say to yourself, "Is it going to be, you know?" Will will Islam eventually take over Europe because it's looking like it's going to? Um, that quiet invasion that they've that they've conducted and they the math on the reproductive cycle of people and how many children Muslims are having compared to you know Anglo Saxon yeah Europeans. I saw a video on that the other day and I'm not sure on 100 percent of the numbers, but it was very compelling. It made me think of Braveheart when Longshanks was like, if we can't get them out, we'll breed them out. That's it. That's it. And so. Uh, that's what's going on. I mean, you can see it, and it's happening all over the world. And Trump's one of the few people that has stood up and said, you know, we need to we need to put the brakes on this stuff because, dude, it's I'm telling you, it's a deliberate clash of societies or of civilizations, man. These these people do not um, intermingle with anyone else. They can't even intermingle with people of their own religion, Shia versus Sunni. Right. They're butchering each other. So don't tell me they're going to eventually assimilate truly assimilate into our society. I mean, we're seeing clips everywhere now of Muslims not standing up in stadiums for the national anthem. You know, um, I just saw one this morning of a guy with his four wives sitting in the stands for a national anthem, and they're all sitting there not getting up, and somebody's filming them. Um, they, they don't want to assimilate. They, they're not here to assimilate. They're not here to become Americans and um, celebrate the 4th of July. They're here to um, basically spread Islam. That's yeah, during that during that march uh, after the big millions of women every, uh, marching and stuff, uh, one woman who happened to be a Muslim lady in hijab, there was like a lady who was marching with her, like yeah, power between the people, you know, we need to do it together and all this other stuff. This lady winds up going on the news show like the next day, kind of trumpeting what you're just saying, like look, man, we just want to be able to practice. Like we're getting hated on because we're in America and we people won't let us practice our Sharia law in our neighborhoods and shit like that. And it's just like, dude, really? I mean, you're you're really expecting to be able to like do some shit like that? Here, like, where, where, what other country would that fucking work? Like, just uh, you can practice your religion, but when you get into that Sharia madness, like you're talking, that, that, that's that's a whole fucking horse of a different color. No, oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, hey, hey, you know, no problem. Look, your daughter um, didn't wear her job and and has a boyfriend that's not Muslim. Absolutely, stoner. Fuck it. Yeah, just stoner to death. Throw acid Nobody. in her face. You know, yeah. honor I mean, killing. You know. Exactly. Yeah, let's, you know, go ahead, guys. It's no big deal. It's, it's the way you do things, you know. Let's, you know, you guys just take care of the body. Don't make us come and get it. We're only in the 21st fucking century, guys <laughs> and gals. Right. So, uh, while we're on that subject, what's going on in Australia now? Um, headline on Breitbart, Australians fleeing areas of heavy Islamic settlement to protect our daughters, says Senator. This is a person who's a politician. In Australia, uh, that things are getting off the tracks down there, and Muslims are intimidating, pushing people out of out of entire areas. Um, so it's basically self -segre segregation that's going on down there. Hmm. Uh, people are running from these from these people, and it seems like I don't know what it is, dude, but um, they're usually when when you do studies, it's usually once Islamic population reaches like. 25 to 30 percent of the population is when they start going off and really, really flexing their muscle against other religions. But it's, they're nowhere near that in Australia, nowhere near that in America, nowhere near that in Europe, even though, you know, much bigger in Europe right now. Yeah. And they are just, dude, they're on a rampage, crime rampage, rapes and murders and um, group gang rapes that they're like putting on Facebook Live and stuff. Yeah. Uh, these, these people are, are, it's like the most hardcore have come here, you know, to these countries. And yeah, and you posted, uh, you posted, of course, you know, everyone's like, oh, fuck, you believe Assad? Come on, man. So you posted, and I posted it too about Assad saying, like, yes, man, there's there is terrorists within the the ranks of the refugees. And then, you know, whatever. Of course, that opens the like, he's killing his own people. Putin and him are killing his own people. And you know, whatever. I respect everyone's opinion, but that is a misinformed opinion. 
if you feel that it is, you know, Putin de- or Putin uh, uh, Assad with Putin decimating his own people. You know, it's 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 been pretty well declared by the boots on the ground that they're defending themselves against outside forces. Well, you know, we call it ISIS, obviously, but it's you know outside forces fulfilling that agenda that we talked about before. Wesley Clark, not just not that he had it, but he talked about it. You know, five countries in seventy years or whatever it was, and Syria was one of them. Well, they give them these these cute little names of, of you know Al Nusra and ISIS and yeah. Al Qaeda and everything. It's the same groups, I mean, right? It's the same groups. Um, they've got the same playbook, as I said. But yeah, you know the things that are going on, um, you know. In in the world right now, it's it's basically the Australians are saying that their society is fraying right now. Self segregation has become a reality, where people that are seeking to protect our children, our daughters, our property, and our liberty, sex attacks on women and girls have become increasingly common in Europe since the advent of migrant of the migrant crisis. The German authorities and media came under heavy criticism for apparently attempting to cover up the outbreak of mass sex attacks on New Year's Eve, 2015-2016 while assaults in neighboring Austria rose by 133%. Um, more recently, Sweden was shocked when a gang rape was live-streamed on Facebook, and Italian populist Matteo Salavino called for the introduction of chemical castration for sex offenders after a Nigerian migrant was accused of attempting to rape a 62-year-old woman working at an asylum center. Um, you know, it's just, the, these stories go on and on and on, and... So it's it's uh, something's got to be done about it, and the fact that liberals the, that liberals are fighting you know this extreme vetting process and things like that it 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 bewilders me um, how ignorant and blind these people are. Basically, they think that everybody's got to be kind and loving and give them a chance and yeah. you know. Um, I, it's just, like I've said it before, man, it's people's ignorance, which literally means being uninformed, is and can and will be dangerous to you, to me, to your families. This is what the fuck I'm talking about. You don't – I understand you don't know the nature of the threat, but get your head out of your ass and stop being so emotional about shit and recognize basically that there is one. And you and I aren't talking out of our ass. Why do we lock our doors? Why do we you know, do things to protect ourselves? Because we understand that there is a threat. Well, and you sit there and you, and I can see how people can, you know, like lesbians and, and gay men holding up um, signs at marches saying, you know, um, down with Islamophobia. Yeah, and you know, so Facebook and Twitter cater to what you like, right? So they're going to feed you directly. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> they're going to feed you directly stuff that you want to read, right? Stuff that agrees with your mentality, right? So these people apparently aren't seeing the pictures of gays being thrown off roofs, um, you know, of lesbians being killed, of, of people being hung, you know, all this sort of stuff. They're, and if they are, are they in denial? Are they? It's it's like sheep inviting the lions in. Yeah, exactly. Because because dude, those people aren't going to be fighting to save me. No. Right? No. No. They're going to be hiding in a corner somewhere. They're going to be, I mean, yeah, once they realize the fucking shit done hit the fan and they've been embracing a freaking, you know, what's that whole that parable about the snake and shit, trying to save the snake and, like, snake bites her. Like, I told you, bitch, I was a snake. What'd you think? Like, dude, you exactly. can't, it, it's, it, and then and only then, that's what I'm saying, that's the worst part about it. Do you realize, like, oh, shit, it's a threat too late. Like, I've been played fucking clown-like crusty and literally, like you just said, invited uh, the enemy into my living room. With open arms, like, you know, hey, I'll, I'll house you. you know, like, again, I, I get the humanitarian aspect of it, but again, you can't save everybody, and you got to know the nature of the threat. Well, we've got, look, the uh, places like Portland, Seattle, major cities all over the country that have thousands and thousands of homeless American citizens, children starving. Veterans. <laughs> 50,000 veterans that are homeless. And we want to be humanitarians with people who want to come in here and kill us. That's that's what I'm saying. And in the shit that really oh, it upsets me is when they do things like this summer, the little boy with shit and blood all over him, while the 
sycophantic photographers just circle him and take pictures of him to then pull on our heartstrings or the, the the dead boy who had washed up on the shore if you remember this like six months ago it's like this is the shit which is real that's not fake fucking news but understand why that happened you know what i mean if it was just it was if it was the narrative that they would say it is and we weren't under attack by freaking crazy fuckers I would, I would be so willing. Like, but like you said, there's people here we could help too. I would be more willing to help if I knew it wasn't some Trojan horse type shit. But since I know it is, it's not worth my life, my friend's life, my family's life to, to try to be Captain save a type shit. That's not on my agenda. <laughs> yeah. So um, the New York Times – sorry to go in a different direction with this. No, bro. Because uh, I've got to go we, – we, I've, I've been wanting to circle back to Flynn because it's – I mean, the media is going to a whole new level of lunacy here with this. New York Times. Bigly. Uh, Friedman, um, this reporter's name, that saying that Flynn's resignation shows Russia hacking was on a scale with 9-11 and Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Thomas Friedman, you hack. Right. No pun, no pun intended, but, but they have to trump it up. Like, they have to... And they play off people's ignorance, like you just said about Obama caught on tape, or you know, fuck, they all hack. Like they've all been doing it. It's just if like, I could just, if I could just be on one of those shows just once, and go off on these people, and then just get up and take my mic dude, off. And yeah, dude, they would cut your mic. They'd have quote unquote technical problems from the moment you sat down, champ. Yeah. So yeah, he was on Scarborough, on Morning Joe, and and Morning Joe's. The only question I would ask you is to start with. Is it, a cred- is it credible and is there uh, that there in any way that this president could not have known about this conversation that the White House had been warned about a month ago? Um, and Friedman said, I share Micah's real outrage on the issue. I don't care what he told Pence. We only care what he told Pence because Pence went out and basically misled the public on face of the nation. The issue is what did he tell Trump? Did he and Trump actually cook up this whole thing after the Russians did not respond harshly to the eviction of their spies and diplomats? Trump actually tweeted out. So do you see how he's twisting this? Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, well, like Trump reacted to Russia not not reacting harshly to the eviction of, of their diplomats like um, like they were supposed to. Well, I mean, again, it's it's fucking chess. You don't you don't you don't lash out at each provocative measure, dude. You I mean you didn't see anything happen after the ambassador got killed? Another one of their diplom two other diplomats got killed within the same week. Putin didn't right. really do shit yet, or nothing that we can see anyway. Right. Um, I I, I'm that's... just I'm just I'm just a little I crack up to like today like how they just seized all over it. They don't have any power in the House or Senate, really, so they have to have these press conferences with all these heavy hitters, you know, all these old freaking veterans that can barely freaking stand up straight. When I say veterans, like veterans of Congress, uh, you know, just trying to do whatever they can to, like, make this way more than it is. Dude, and, you know, so when we talk about Russia, the Ukraine, um, everything that's going on, did you hear the phone call between Maxine Waters and the guy that pranked her from the from the Ukraine? No. From Russia? No. It was like a morning, literally, dude, a morning drive talk show in Russia. And the guy acted like he was the president of the Ukraine and had a long conversation with Maxine Waters. No. About, that would be about, awesome if we could do that about on the sanctions show. And about her, she's sitting there talking, well, Donald Trump's going to run into some pretty stiff... Um, opposition from Democrats if he tries to, you know, relinquish or, or slow down on sanctions against Russia. And this guy's continuing to act like the president of the Ukraine and talking about them being attacked more and having her, she's freaking out, right? <laughs> and this is the same Maxine Waters that thought Russia had attacked, was it Korea? Vietnam. Vietnam. And I think that was in the that same... Right, and that was right before Pelosi yes, yes. said that President Bush. We, we got to work with President Bush. Dude, what what <laughs> four martini lunch did these? I was just gonna say, dude, they must have had a nice smoke session or something before that fucking press conference. But yeah, they they yeah, clearly I mean, were not firing on all cylinders. Dude, when you look at Pelosi and listen to her talk, you got to say to yourself, how many 
medicine <laughs> prescriptions for her brain is she on she always looks so freshly tased you know what i mean it's always so like <laughs> like she just saw something really scary in a movie like all day you know what i mean it's just like holy shit she always seems so shocked at all like points and, of the day and here's the thing you assholes in california keep electing these i people. know i know i know and i don't even start on that I, I, it, it does base the question like how how you guys how She's been there for a long freaking time. Yeah, I, I, I listen to those two and just, it's beyond me, dude. It's beyond me. These, this is, yeah. are they that fucking stupid, Jeff? Please I, help I, me. I, that's what I'm saying. I think so. I do. I wondered that myself. I was like, no, 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 no. I, over the years, I'd be like, no, no, no. They can't. This has to be like part of some show or, but no, dude. I, I, they get in there and like you said, they just, Fucking martini lunches. They just prop themselves up in this almost like autopilot mode of sorts. It's Especially, like they're shooting. It's like they're shooting Newbane. That's a pig tranquilizer, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Mark, Mark, Mark Kerr, the MMA fighter, started shooting Newbane for the pain. Oh, jeez, dude. And he was zombied out, right? It, it, his career unraveled because of addiction like that. Yeah. He's a great guy. I loved him to death. Watch the Smashing That's, Machine if you want to see that whole thing unfold. One of the most raw. So that's a rough one. Yeah, it is. Anyway, uh, we digress. But but yeah, it's it's they're literally they're putting so much. I don't know what the hell they're on. They they've got to be on something. And I if mean, not, yeah. they should be. <laughs> yeah, I I think most of them. Uh, I don't know, man. Like knowing not to get into Pizzagate or any of that, but knowing some of their proclivities, like they're just they're just they're they're just into weird shit. Like I I don't doubt it, man. I I don't doubt. Uh, just seeing like some of their behaviors, some of them, not all of them, but like your Pelosi's, your your Hillary Clinton with that like bobblehead cackle, like there's some, you know, pass them to your boy. I wouldn't mind a taste of whatever these guys are working with because it's uh, it seems pretty entertaining. <laughs> and uh, so, not to there's so many headlines going on right now in the world, dude. Things are, things have gone completely upside down. It um, has. I'm it literally has. trying to keep up here. So you want me to go through different headlines for you? Yeah, let's do of the, of the of the real news. Oh, and by the way, up here I missed it. Gary Mativier from Channel Six News was having a how to recognize fake news symposium with other media people from like the Quad City Times and a couple other channels. And I was going to go sit and listen to these guys and then ask questions and point out how. Their media is full of shit, yeah, actually. Right. And I couldn't make it in time. I had to take my kids to swim practice and had some other stuff I had to do. And I was so pissed off that I couldn't make it. I was just going to unleash on those people. But, uh, I mean, listen to all this stuff going on. The Vatican, the Vatican expresses concerns over spread of nationalism. So, yes, of course. The I'm sorry to all the Catholics out there. Yes, the, they're part of that New World Order. The globalist agenda. Yes. Um and they're saying uh, uh, Priebus is future in doubt, list of alternate chief of staff candidates circulated. And that's the thing. This to me on Reince Priebus, Reince Priebus has always made bridges to the liberal side, right? That guy that guy will do anything to stay in power. And I think he's the little worm. I think he's the mole on the inside that um, allowed this leak about mm. Flint. I that's what they're saying. There's been some systemic leaks, and they're trying to track that down as to where it's from. I have to get the old plumbers back into back into business. And you can also wonder uh, if the intel community really was pissed off at Trump for some of the stuff he said during the campaign, and you know because they had recorded Flynn in his meeting, right? Yeah. All that stuff gets recorded. Yeah. So, um, you know, they could have said, "Look, man, we're gonna we're gonna release the tapes if you don't have him resign." Um, and and on and at the same time, if you remember right, uh, Flynn is actually a Democrat who got fired as a general by Obama, mm-hmm. right? Um, so who knows what was going on? And there were a lot of people that felt on the conservative side, people in the know that felt that Flynn was a really bad decision to begin with. So uh, maybe what they were saying is true, right? I mean, maybe he could have been put there to do what he did. Like we've talked about, Trump is, I think, somewhat of an anomaly. I do believe he's beholden to some to some globalist shit still, but I still think he has pissed off the military-industrial military complex 
and they have apparatuses and have had for 50, 60 years to deal with shit covertly on the low. I mean, who knows? Who knows what they're doing, like, the things that they're doing that he's not aware of, people that they're around him that have agendas he's not aware of um, to do to, to take him out, supposedly. You know what I mean? I don't know. We'll see. Well, let's see. Let's see how they um, corral him and put, put a leash on him first. And if that doesn't work, then then the next stage steps in, you know, with, well, again, like last week's show, I'm I'm still a little, you know, dismayed by by so much uh, Goldman Sachs that's around him, Goldman Sachs and the Stephen uh, Stephen uh, F- uh, Feinberg, the head of former head right. of DynCorp. Um, that, well, we've got the the Treasury Secretary from there. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, in the Secretary of State being former, you know, uh, Exxon head, which you know, whatever. Like I said, I I'm rather. Than, you think that the you think that people like that wouldn't be in place if Hillary had one? No, they those, absolutely, those absolutely the, would. I mean, I, and I, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm not knocking him just because he's with Exxon. I would rather judge him by the fruit he bears during the next four years than just condemn him because he was with Exxon. I would rather try to not be as preventative thinking like that. You know what I mean? Give right. him and a o- shot. And Obama had those people, right? No, absolutely. I, mean, I knew I knew Obama was compromised. When he got elected office, I talked to my brother, my oldest brother, and he was just like, man, I cried and this and that. I'm like, brother, I cried for the fucking whole different reason. I mean, yeah, it's cool the first black <laughs> dude got in and shit, but... I was crying for a whole different reason. <laughs> Fucking Larry Summers, the big new Brzezinski. Like I knew this was just a, a a different, more modern version of uh of Clinton essentially. And then when I yeah, it's uh all that glitters was not fucking gold, ladies and gentlemen. Oh dear God. And uh, so when is Trump supposed to go to England? I'm not sure, but I know I mean, they're they're that's another one that's there. pretty divided on that. They're the one side, the labor side, was telling them not to come. Like, cancel the visit. Well, but, yeah, there were some people, and there was very heated debates in Parliament, which there always are over there. And uh, Theresa May, the prime minister, slapped down the uh, the opposing party head pretty pretty harshly. It was it was pretty impressive, actually. I posted it on my Facebook. Um, yeah, I saw that. But, that was awesome. Yeah, but she um, has formally rejected the petition to prevent Trump from visiting the UK. So I'm sure that there's going to be mass demonstrations. There's going to be riots, all that's, you know, there's going to be a bunch of nutty shit going on, um, you know, with the, with the, uh, you know, anti-government people. And, and most people would consider you and I anti-government. We're not anti-government. We're anti-globalists. Anti-tyranny, anti-anti-freedom, anti-asshole. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, Anti poisonous so, yeah, he's, of my he's skies, go. my he's water, my food. Sorry. I'm I'm wondering I'm I'm trying to find out when he's supposed to visit because God, that's gonna be fun to watch. So we got Senator Roy Blunt, breaking news, head of the intelligence committee, calling for investigation into Flynn findings. So we're getting a bipartisan move here. Which nothing will nothing will come of that. No. But I mean, the fact he, that the he, Democrats he, got got, you know, somebody on the other side. At yeah. least to entertain their... Maxine Waters is going to throw out a bunch of stupid, harsh questions, and, um, and then they'll do nothing about it. Right? Yeah, a larger, larger picture, though, I would like to see Trump get his shit together, get his cabinet more in place. Like, this guy was the head of the National Security you know, Agency, so I would, you know, that's a pretty big freaking job. So I would like to see not so much conk and bonk, keystone cop shit going on here. I would like to see a little bit smoother... You know what I mean? Uh, better judgment and choices. You know, the Flynn and, or not Flynn, but Trump and his Spicer were saying this was an eroding trust that went down for you know a few whatever over the course of time, as opposed to one particular instance. Which okay, you know that's cool. But your first red flag in a, in a situation like being president, especially for an NSA head, is is enough. I would think would be enough. Right. Right. Yeah. The um, I'm. Going through some stuff here. The headlines are pretty crazy today. They are. I mean, it's kind of. Uh, I, I'm anxious to see what's going. I like I said with Iran, with North Korea, with China. It's um, it's like I said, it's an ever evolving situation, Chant. But like I said, will there ever be an actual hard big war? I think we'll, we'll see a lot of strategic the... skirmishes, but not. I, I just don't know. I don't know. Are you yeah. going to see your big Absolutely invasions? There Absolutely, there will be because. Um, the the people at the very top of the food chain um, will be in places where they're going to be protected 
And you, you've got to remember, this thing is about what? It's about resources, right? Yes, yes. yes. Um, That's what I'm saying. Like, you can't you can't go in and decimate a place with chemical weapons or nuclear weapons and then expect their 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 natural resources or their infrastructure to be viable. Like you want to leave something there to to go back to. Well, we're not going to nuke we're not going to nuke places where there's natural resources. We're just going to blow the shit out of it like we've been doing in the Middle East, right? But that's, I mean, fuck, we've been using DU so much over in Iraq and, you know, it's depleted if uranium. Nuked, if, if it came down to it and, and America, Russia, and China nuked each other, well, how many people are gone, gone now? That's what I'm saying. Right? I, I, it's all for America. not. Look I can't that. even imagine that. I Seriously, I can't. You know, hundreds of millions of people. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, you're look, starting from serious square one, like except for there's the, too many. There's, look, you and I both know, and anybody that anybody that that does the math, the population of the Earth is exploding, right? Seven uh, billion, six plus billion, almost seven. It's not sustainable, right? It's supposed to be at thirteen, and I don't know how many years, but um, it's it's literally going to double, and the Earth can't sustain it, right? I mean, people. You listen to, to experts talk about it, and they go, "This is not sustainable." So there's no way um, population has to be slowed down. And and Bill Gates, dude, Bill Gates and his wife talk about population control, dude. That no, this is no, oh no, bro. This is uh, shit. This is the, the, what they call a, a Thomas Malthus, a Neo Malthusian view of the world. That yes, we need to curtail. Uh, population. The Georgia Guidestones, like I forget what they, the number they say. Five hundred thousand in perpetuity. There you go. There you go. Global, so I mean, there is population. a huge agenda of war being a huge part of just like knocking out a couple million uh, disease. Yeah, I mean, it's um, Colonel Fletcher Prouty. He used to work for President Kennedy. Man has a lot of great series of interviews before he passed away on YouTube. Where he talks about not just the Kennedy assassination and basically the globalists did that, but the larger globalist agenda that gets into utilizing wars to, to like you said, knock out a couple million, a couple hundred thousand over the course of a period of time and no, maybe, we're maybe talking test out some million. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. It's a. Uh, but that doesn't even slow it down. That doesn't put no. a in the seven billion on the planet. No, not at all. So, I mean, what, what do we need? A good pandemic? That's what I was just gonna say. You need a good. Uh, what, what was the shit in um, in, in um, Ireland? Yeah. the the plague, the black plague, or or the soft kill weapons. I mean, of course, you got the big, you know, conspiracies on AIDS being, you know, utilized to to decimate certain certain populations. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Who knows what kind of te- what is it tangled web we weave when we practice to deceive? Yeah, yeah. I love how uh, I love how uh, you know we dude. We have attention deficit disorder because we can't stay on one fucking subject for like five minutes. Can't we? There's so much going on. <laughs> well, that's not our ADD. That's just we're just being inundated with everything. And honestly, you know, we have a sense of history, so we could easily talk about something now and then be like, this goes back to fucking such and such, and this goes back, you know, and we could easily create these circles, you know what I mean? These, uh, where it, you know what I mean? Where it spirals back around. History repeating right. itself of sorts. And remember what I was just saying. I, I've got to bring this up uh, about Reince Priebus being the the worm inside inside the White House, right? Yeah. Um, you think that's who it is? I'm telling you, man. Um, you know, the headline here is, as Flynn resigns, previous future in doubt as Trump allies circulate, list of alternate chief of staff candidates. So, um, basically, they feel that Reince Priebus is allowing Obama holdovers to... To infiltrate and screw things up for uh, for for uh, Trump, which is insane because that I mean that is the chief of staff like that is the mastermind of the administration other than Trump. So uh, so it's, it's if he's compromised, then that's infecting everything. Yeah, listen to this. After GOP establishment forces inside President Donald Trump's White House forced out National Security Advisor, retired Army Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, sources close to the president confirm to Breitbart News. There is no, there is serious doubt as to whether this early administration shakeup will also see the exit of White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus. I mean, um, hmm. yeah, they want him out, and I'm surprised when I saw How did he that get there? Trump had picked him. Saying. I went, "What the fuck is he doing?" How did he get there? How did? That's what I'm saying about the judgment and putting these people in place. How the fuck? 
You got you got well, Flynn, your uh, national security advisor, resigning in less than three weeks, and I got Rance Priebus, your chief of staff, about ready to get dealt with. Like, who's in charge I of this hiring was, process? I, I seriously think he brought some people in to do it was this. To keep tabs on the other side, right? Oh. Um, to to appease the 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 establishment with bringing uh, Priebus in and, and other people. Who knows, man? That's I mean, that's the thing we got to pay attention to because it's just like it's all. It's all chess, man. It's nothing is as it seems. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. a huge shakeup in less than a month, dude. Your NSA, your head of your NSA getting taken. I mean, that's. Oh, I guess the education guy was. That was a holdover, or not holdover, but that was from Obama. That was before uh, DeVos got in, I guess. But yeah, that's a that's a big that's a big resignation, man. That's a big resignation. A kind of not a scandal, but that's a big. Uh, it's a big thing to kind of deal with so early on in your administration. Right. Well, like I say, it, it also lends a little bit of credibility to the administration by firing people as quickly as they are. Not fucking around. No, not at all. And I think Priebus will go. And they, they're fine. probably going to have to wait a little bit because, I mean, you got a couple high-level resignations within 48, 24 hours. Like, that's it's just a bad look optic-wise, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Well... It all we were do- waiting for big news to drop this week on other stuff, but, you know, hey. Well, as much as we wanted to stay away from politics this week, I mean, you know, things develop within a week, champ. We try to do a show once a week, but within those seven days, so much goes on that we would just be derelict in our duties if we did not cover. Right. No. We, we, um, but we need to, I think. Oh, God, I want to try and get away from politics so bad and go to other stuff that's going on, but what? it always it always it always ends up back at this. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. What other? I mean, I guess we could talk off air. There's plenty of conspiracies that don't involve politics, so I guess that's that's a silly question to ask. But yeah, no, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. All right, good, good. Let's do that. And uh, unless something huge happens within the week, which is quite possible, which we might have to dedicate maybe half of the show to. Whatever the breaking news is in the second half, to you know, kind of slowly streaming away. I mean, this is gonna be this is gonna be a pretty hot newsworthy administration, my friend. I mean, we're three weeks in, and here we are dealing with NSA resignation, and you know, I don't know how how long we're gonna be able to get away from politics. Right, right. Well, maybe we can stick with two subjects. There we go. That's what I'm saying. We can break it up because there is so much other stuff going on. So much other stuff. I mean. Really, there there really is a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, I think we've we've covered a lot, and my well, brain is scrambled again. My my watering uh my watering bucket is empty, my friend. I think we have <laughs> we've done our duty again this week. Hey, thanks to our uh, thanks to our sponsors, which we are always always thankful for. My goodness, Iowa Bison, IowaBison dot com. If you want some of the leanest, most highest protein grass-fed bison, go check out iowabison.com. And if you uh, happen to be interested in the Second Amendment and like to roll, concealed carry, and also very comfortable and look also kind of cool doing it, thec4.com. And we actually happen to have a little bit of a promotion going on with those two sponsors, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you go to our YouTube page, The Conspiracy Farm on YouTube, and you subscribe to that psalm, bitch, and you take a picture of you doing so, you take a picture, uh, send that screenshot to our Facebook page, and you will be in the running for a case. I said a case of bison, which would cost you a pretty penny at the retail market, or um, an item from theconcealedcarry.com. Um, I also host a podcast on my own, way more lighthearted. We don't even we don't even go near the rabbit hole. We just talk about life, love. I've had this gentleman on UFC Hall of Famer Pat Militich, Kamala the Ugandan Giant, Wonder Boy, Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson, a little bit of everybody. I try to switch it up just to talk about you know life and um, the things going on in their life. And if you want to get trained to be a badass, a lethal weapon, or just get yourself healthy, where do we go do that, Patrick? Go to firehorsecombatives.com and specialize in law enforcement and military, but also opening up a branch for civilians, which will be called Indignation Inc. I Inc. is the short name for it, but uh, we've partnered up with some great people that are very qualified, and we're going to do some really cool stuff with civilians and, and eventually roll into five day long basically camps on self defense where people can be taught how to uh, fight hand to hand proper nutrition proper 
strength and conditioning workouts, um, weapons, building and room clearing, uh, concealed carry classes, all kinds of stuff like that 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 the average civilian is never exposed to. But uh, to, for people to get into these classes, actually, they're going to have to pass a criminal background check. So they'll have to submit their name, social security number, and birth date, and we can do criminal background checks on them, make sure that they're not, not a bad trying guy. to train the bad guys. Nope, we're going to train the good guys, all the all the good law-abiding citizens, and and uh, teach them how to take care of themselves and their families. So it's going to be it's going to be really cool stuff. Well, solid man, that sounds awesome. I'm going to have to jump on that, guys. I will be heading back to the Iowa land very soon. And if you want to hear have a free seat, yeah, I appreciate that, brother. Uh, if you want to hear anything more about all of this, go to www.theconspiracyfarm.com. You will have all of our archived episodes of bio on Pat and myself. We have some T-shirts, a little bit of merchandise available. Go check us out, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing this for you.